Well, guys, we got to go over Nintendo's financial report for the very first quarter of 2025 because as I'm looking at this, I keep having one thought, just one, come across my mind. Nintendo needs Switch 2. <laughs> they, they really need Switch 2 to, get, to come out, especially if they want to maintain the profit levels that they've been accustomed to because, yes, everything is down. And we know why everything is down year over year. Tears of the Kingdom came out last year. It sold 20 million units. It boosted Switch sales. There was a special edition, Switch OLED. Uh, but despite that, all that did, combined with the Mario movie, is keep profit levels where Nintendo had been basically at since 2019. 2019, 2020, 21, 22, and 23 all had very, very high profits and, and very good margins for Nintendo. Now, this is a transition year that we're in right now for this fiscal year, so naturally, things are expected to be down, uh, but they're down quite a bit, and I think it's time uh, that we at least you know recognize that Nintendo needs to start really shifting focuses a little bit to their next system. They probably already have. And look, they could reveal the system as soon as this month. We have no idea. They also might not reveal it until March. But reality is that I, you can kind of see in this financial report that it's it's time. So let's get into it. Uh, the financial results, this is the explanatory material. We're not going to go over like the literal numbers material because it gets a little boring to look at. But this gives us um, a, a better form. And this is directly from Nintendo. So this is their in, entire consolidated finances for the first quarter. Uh, so, you know, they're doing good. Uh, net profit of 39.2% uh, for their ratio. The actual profits at 181 billion yen. Uh, that's pretty cool. But that was all for fiscal year last year. Uh, this is the current one. It's it dropped from 39 to 32. I think this is the, the thing I'm actually concerned about the most. If you look at the net profit down 55%. Look at the ordinary profit down 55%. Look at the operating profit down 18, uh, down 70, down 46 and a half. Uh, yes, all of this is just Tears of the Kingdom and uh, Mario movie related. All these first numbers are, yeah, we're down a lot because we don't have the Mario movie and we don't have a Tears of the Kingdom level game in our first quarter. But this is the... This is the thing that's interesting is that the ratio on their profits. So they were just a more profitable company overall than right now last year. So uh, I, I think that this is just a sign that it's time again for Nintendo to get the Switch 2. But we'll talk about the Switch 2 here in a little bit. Let's go over the rest of these results. Uh, we have the consolidated uh, sales right here. Again, everything down except right here where you see a 42.8% increase. Now, this is this is this is interesting. Um, if we look, it says includes hardware, software, including downloadable versions, includes home and visual content, includes merchandise sales, official stores such as Nintendo Tokyo, as well as playing cards. Uh, just kind of interesting that this others went up so much, almost a billion yen higher. Uh, could be because of Legos, could just be because they opened more stores. You know, who knows? But there's a lot of stuff included in that. Uh, as we scroll down here, we see the gross profits. Again, everything's down except for the gross profit ratio, which is really weird because we just talked about up here how, like, their net profit ratio is down 6%, but then their gross profit, uh, or is it the gross profit went up right here. It went up 0.9 points of a percent. I... Don't ask me to crunch the numbers. I don't know how Nintendo's crunching these numbers. But still, obviously, profits are way down. Uh, this is way down. This is way down. Uh, the percentage that's di digital, this has gone up. So uh, it, this this is what it's telling you. If you didn't know, 58.9% of all game sales for Nintendo were digital. So almost 60%. It keeps climbing. Uh, don't be surprised if sometime during the Switch era, this says like 80% of all sales are digital. It, it, guys, we're, we're getting there. Switch 2, I don't know if it's going to be the last Nintendo system that is going to uh, support physical games, but you can kind of see that we're getting towards that future of Nintendo maybe not supporting physical. But right now, it's still a pretty big percentage. 40% is still massive. So, yeah, we're going to have physical uh, going into the next uh, the next generation. Now, we look at the rest of this stuff here, the Sally General Administration. So this is all uh, all the stuff that it, it takes to run the company. Uh, down 70% and our operating profit is insane. Uh, but, you know, 
They increased their expenditures a little bit here, uh, which they say rose by 2.4%, mainly due to a rise in research and development expenses. So they are spending more money on research and development, which is important because, hey, they're heading into a new console generation, but they're going to have to have accessories and all this other stuff uh, and in research and development for different games, possibly. So, yeah, a lot of stuff uh, going on there, 18% uh, increase on the ex expenses for research and, and development, 21% uh, decrease on advertising. Well, they're not advertising Zelda, right? So, uh, I mean, they'll be advertising a new Zelda soon, but not one that's Tears of the Kingdom level. Uh, their ordinary profit and net profit, obviously everything's going to show down outside of their non-operating expenses, which isn't actually great because that means their expenses are getting going rising. Like, they're... they're the expenses to run the company are rising, <laughs> but the money is going down. Again, this is a pretty negative expense report. And yes, Nintendo's stock uh, took a major dive today. It, it just has. Now, it happens pretty much anyways, but it, it, a much bigger drop than it did over the last financial report. Uh, so there's their consolidated forecast. Uh, they haven't changed anything in their forecast. They're still planning to sell... Uh, they're 13 and a half million uh, switches, despite the fact that you're going to see in a bit they didn't actually sell that many in this first quarter. I think right around like exactly 2 million. But we got to get into the highlights here. Uh, first, we have some uh, sales here for Paper Mario 1000 Your Door 1.76 million. Luigi's Mansion 2, 1.19. So essentially 1.2 million. So both are million sellers. That gives them 3 million selling uh, games. At least a million selling games. Uh, this you can see their quarterly unit sales trends. Obviously, this is you know the holiday season when there's always a jump, but then you just see it's just continuing to go down. Um, yeah, so what are you gonna do? <laughs> what are you gonna do? Uh, the sales went a little bit up because the fourth quarter is always the lowest quarter. But I mean, you can literally see this is quarter one of uh, this fiscal year. This is quarter one of last fiscal year. Yeah, that's a pretty major dip. Uh, and it probably quarter two is, is probably going to be not great <laughs> for Nintendo, but we'll see. Uh, quarter three still might end up being all right because that's holiday period for Nintendo. And when I say not great, I'm just talking relative to last year, of course. This is the eighth year of the Nintendo Switch platform. This is really, really great for the eighth year. Um, so during the first quarter of the previous fiscal year, unit sales for both hardware and software were extremely high for our first quarter when Super Mario Bros. movie energized our dedicated video game platform business and The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom was released. So, like, they're even noting, hey, I just want to let you know, like, we should, you, no one should have expected the numbers from last year, but still doesn't change the fact that it, it all of it looks bad. And I, I think this trend where everything looks negative, I think it's going to look that way this entire year. I don't think there's going to be a single quarter this fiscal year that's going to be doing as well as any quarter last fiscal year. Uh, the switch is on a downturn, guys. It is what it is. It's just a fact. It's on a downturn, uh, and we're, we're getting ready for the next thing. Uh, they say you know, unit sales of hardware in the first quarter of this year held at the same level as the previous quarter, uh, showing that sales are stable. That's the way they call it. It... <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess, I guess the sales are stable, but you usually want it to be a little bit better than that. So it is what it is. Uh, scrolling down, you see Nintendo Switch hardware sell through and annual players. What, what, what really is interesting in this chart is even though sales of Switch are dipping and, you know, it, it's very obvious that it's time for the next thing, they somehow increased year over year how many people are playing switch because annual players are basically anyone who has turned on and touched their nintendo switch in the last year 128 million people in the last 12 months have turned on a nintendo switch and used it that is a lot man that is a very very active user base so even though switch sales are declining Switch activity isn't. Switch activity is increasing. People are not letting their switches collect dust. Uh, that's a you know a line we use a lot. Like, oh man, finally I can wipe the dust off my my console. Well, you don't gotta wipe dust off Switch because people are just playing it. They're enjoying what's out there. So even though there's no mega game, people are just buying things. There's some really fascinating things. When you deep dive into the numbers as well, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it in a bit. As an example, uh, one thing I'll bring up is like Super Smash Bros. sold 440,000 units last quarter. What? <laughs> that's more than the Zelda games combined. That's 
more than the Pokemon games. Like, why? I, dude, why? No new content, no new advertising. Smash Bros. sold almost half a mil uh, last quarter. That, that's just it's crazy, man. Uh, anyways, so we'll go down here. Uh, we'll see some other stuff here. Nintendo Switch first-party sell-through. Uh, although overall sell-through is below the level of the past few years, sales have been stable for Princess Peach, Showtime, and the new Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. <laughs> I love how they got this this whole chart, and they're like, see this green section? That's Tears of the Kingdom. That's Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> Just letting you know, this is how much Tears of the Kingdom made up for our our software sell through. It was literally half of the sales last year or whatever at this time. Uh, I I find that pretty funny. But anyways, this is where we're at right now. You can obviously it's below even the gray bar, so obviously sales are down. Uh, and you could just kind of see like this is just the software sales peaked in 2021, dipped in 22, bounced back in 23. Tears of the Kingdom made 2024 like their peak year, and now they're. They're, they're, they're going back down to uh to, to these levels back here 2020 and under so yeah you know we these are kind of the peak years of switch 21 fiscal year 21 through fiscal year 24 and now we're now we're dipping down um but yeah let's just go through some of the stuff they said here so sell through for first party software for nintendo switch in the first quarter was lower than the levels of the last few years including the same period last fiscal year when tears of the kingdom uh recorded strong sales however paper mario thousand year door released on may 23rd were sold Solid selling 1.3 million units in the six weeks after its release. In addition, Princess Peach Showtime, which was released on March 22nd in the previous fiscal year, uh, has posted a cumulative sell through of over 1.3 million units. That's why our, that's their third game. Uh, that's a million seller. Uh, sell through this fiscal year has accounted for approximately half of that total. This title can also be enjoyed by people who don't usually play action games. We expect the sales to continue to grow in the long term. So they think Princess Peach Showtime will be an evergreen title. Time will tell on that if it actually is. Um, so you get to the digital sales, obviously digital sales, you know, we're, we're down 32% in terms of total digital sales, but the percent of digital sales went up, uh, in terms of percent of how many people are buying digital versus physical. Uh, so this is just a chart that goes over that and just shows the trends. Uh, and then we have the announced first party titles. You know, these are the ones that are already announced. They're not going to give you, you know, if you're looking for them to like address new games and bring up anything new, that'll happen in like a future Nintendo Direct or whatever. Uh, so obviously this already came out. Uh, we have MEO this month, uh, end of September here for uh, for Zelda. Then we have middle of October for Jamboree, beginning of November for Brothership. And then right now, nothing in December, but Donkey Kong Country Returns HD dropping in January. Now, that's pretty much what we have here. We, we They go over, obviously, this... Is this Switch Lite that they probably hope will pick sales up a little bit, uh, September 26th. But really, that's uh, that, that, that's kind of the the large chunk of what's in here. They go over some of their theme park stuff, obviously. Uh, the Donkey Kong uh, Country is scheduled to open at Universal Studios Japan in the second half of 2024. It was already supposed to be open, but there was a big delay. We don't know what the delay was for. Uh, obviously, the, the new Super Mario animated film uh, has been in production uh, it is set for release on April 24, 2026, so still a ways away. Uh, but they're probably well in the, you know, making and conceptualizing and all that stuff for the new movie there. Um, so it says, next we'd like to introduce some of our initiatives to expand the IP. Uh, they're just going over the fact that there's the Mario movie. Uh, they do mention the Zelda movie as well. We are collaborating with uh, Era Productions to develop a live action film of The Legend of Zelda. In addition to that, uh, pre preparations are underway to open Donkey Kong Country area at Super Nintendo World. Uh, now, this is uh, the museum that they announced, I think, last year they announced the museum. Uh, and yeah, it's supposed to open in the fall in Yuji. Uh, in addition, Nintendo San Francisco is scheduled to open in 2025 in San Francisco's Union Square to become our second Nintendo run official store in the United States. So, uh, that is pretty exciting. Obviously, there's still no Nintendo store near me. I keep hoping they'll open one at like Mall of America or something like that. Uh, that that would be really cool. But you know, for now, there's no store near me. But hey, more Nintendo goodness on uh, both coasts, right? We got one in New York, and now we'll have one out in San Francisco and California. Uh, and that's pretty much it. This is just all the numbers, the hard numbers, uh, the reference material. And look, there's updates as well. We can go over the top ten uh, software if you guys want, but Personally, uh, it doesn't matter that much to me. The Switch is at uh, 143 million units. But now what I want to focus on is, while all that financial data is very fascinating, it's time for Switch 2. Can we just stop beating around the bush? It's time for Switch 2. 
That's all this data tells me. Switch is on the downturn, but still popular. It still has a very active user base. They just want new. They want new big games. They want a new system. Uh, look, I don't know if the rumors are true and the Nintendo Switch is launching in March of 2025. That's what the current rumors have it. Uh, because again, those rumors originally also had the Switch 2 coming out this year and being announced in March, and that didn't happen. So... I don't know if those rumors are true, but what I can say is the numbers are saying it's time for Switch 2. Like, it, it's time for us to say farewell to Switch and get going for the next system. Uh, the next system is going to reinvigorate sales. It's going to reinvigorate excitement. It's going to do a lot. And if you think with the Mario, another Mario movie coming, a Zelda thing coming, uh, you know, having a new system out and let, letting those movies help push people to the new system, that would be great. I mean, heck, you might even see a Switch 2 reference in the Mario movie. I don't know if anyone's even talked about that. It's an animated movie. Switch 2 could be in that animated movie. Uh, that That's pretty awesome if you think about there could be a reference to Switch 2 anyways, or just literally a toad when they're walking through the Mushroom Kingdom playing on a Switch 2. Uh, yeah, so I'm just, I'm excited for the future. I know that today's financial report is mostly a negative one, and it's very, very easy to focus on the negatives. Uh, but I, I do think that we also need to remember that Nintendo knows what they're doing, all right? Like, Nintendo is in the midst of the most profitable time ever. So even with the numbers down, uh, it's still very, very big numbers. Uh, and, and I think we forget sometimes that Nintendo... Uh, they just, they've been at this for a long time, guys. Uh, we could talk about what the best strategies are for launch and what we think are good strategies, but we're not, uh, we're not working for Nintendo and we've never launched a product. I've never launched a product anyways. Maybe you guys have. Uh, so we will glance at the top 10 quick, uh, just because that was updated. But uh, to me, the updates are kind of whatever, but we can still look. Uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe at the top at 62.9. Animal Crossing uh, almost at 46 million. As you see, Super Smash Bros. clearly going to cross 35 million uh, in total this year. Breath of the Wild still climbing at 32 million. Uh, Super Mario Odyssey at 28. Pokemon Sword and Shield at 26. Uh, by the way, what's really fascinating with Scarlet and Violet right behind it at 25.29, this is the fastest uh, selling Pokemon game ever. Uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Uh, there's been only been three games or three uh, bundles of games, I guess we'll call it from the Pokemon company that have crossed 25 million in sales. You have Gen 1, you have Sword and Shield, and you have Scarlet and Violet. Well, Scarlet and Violet are the quickest to get to 25 mil. Will they ever pass Gen 1? That I don't know. I don't think so. Gen 1's over 30 million, but uh, I, I, it's just notable how strong Pokemon is, how healthy it is, despite the issues these two games had. Uh, you got Mario Party in here at 20.84, and I presume Tears of the Kingdom is probably eventually going to end up passing uh, Mario Party here on this list. It won't get up to here. Uh, the sales are very slow for this. It'll probably, I would say uh, Tears of the Kingdom will probably end up getting to 21 million, which is just incredible. But the sales are pretty flat for the game. Uh, and then rounding out our top 10 with New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe. Uh, I mean, that's a game that, you know, who knows, maybe Jamboree, if Jamboree blows up, maybe Jamboree can end up knocking this out. I think this top 10 is pretty well set. But Jamboree, Mario Party Jamboree is the one game, I think, if it's got any, if there's any more new releases from Nintendo that can crack this top 10, the Mario Party Jamboree is probably the last uh, the last little bit for that. And then we'll just look at the hardware sales just so you can see the update. And yeah, 143.42 million. And look, one point, almost, I mean, it's going to be at 1.3 billion before the end of this fiscal year on software sold, which is incredible. I mean, look at that software. Nothing else has ever sold a bill. The Wii didn't do it. The DS didn't sell a billion. Uh, no, nothing else has come anywhere close to the level of sales success of the Nintendo Switch. Even like, I know hardware wise, we could talk about, well, well, the, the DS, the DS at 154. Yeah, that's, that's a lot, but the DS only sold 948 million software. So like overall, this has been Nintendo's most successful individual generation. So let me know what you think about this down below. Do you agree that it's kind of just time for Nintendo to transition a little bit to Switch 2? I know some people worry, well, what about the holiday sales? What about, no matter what Nintendo does, uh, sales are going to be either flat or declining 
period for Nintendo moving forward. The, the, the first Switch. There's, there just isn't really anything Nintendo can do to boost those sales without a Tears of the Kingdom level game to come. It would need to be like the next big 3D Mario game uh, would have to be on Switch in order to see that sort of sales bump. You know, we could talk about Legend ZA, but Legend ZA isn't this year. It's conveniently outside of the current fiscal year. According, you know, notice they didn't put Metro Prime 4 or there, which means it's outside of quarter one, those games are planned to come out. So, yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you think about this stuff down in the comments below. I know it's mostly negative in terms of what we're hearing, but also not the worst thing, right? Right? Like, oh no, the sales are doing exactly what we expected them to do. Also, hey, uh, we have a new system coming, and we already announced it before these negative numbers came out that the system is coming. Not announced the system, but announced the system is coming. So just show us the damn thing. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll catch you in the next video.